And that's in park, and then this should be street. What's up, Machine Freaks? I hope you're having a froggy, fresh day. I'm here with the Jeep. Well, the Jeep frame, the Jeep pieces, I guess. There's, uh, yeah, it's it's not together. So, as you guys saw in the last 3D Machines production, we took out the engine, the transmission, and the transfer case all in one shot. That was definitely a touch of chaos. However, we're not going to focus on the engine, transmission, and transfer case right at the moment. We're gonna focus on the frame because I just did buy some powder for the powder coating. You guys know that this thing will have to be sandblasted first. What that means is all this rust, crust, old paint will come right off with the sandblasting and we'll go ahead, put some powder coating on it, uh, get it up to about 400 degrees, make that powder bond right onto this surface so it basically becomes bulletproof and a legit machine. The rear diff is completely done. The rear end of this frame is completely done. Now I just have to work on getting the front portion of the, the well, the front components off of the frame. And believe it or not, about 50% of this is already unbolted, so it's ready to go. Today I got my Invisalign checked out and I got, I see the rubber bands. I became an instrument this morning. <laughs> So we got the bumper off, but there's this bolt still remaining here. The nut came unwelded, so now it's it's gonna be a sucker getting that out. Something I'm not too concerned about at this moment. I did also remove the brake line. It's over there on the ground, and it's got these little plastic uh, holders throughout the frame here. So I'll have to remove these. And then sometime, we're gonna have to re-weld these engine mounts because I absolutely hate the way it was welded on here. That's something that we'll tackle after sandblasting. We'll let him get it all clean, and then we'll really get to see what we're working with. And then if we have to grind more and then weld, then we'll go ahead and do that. I even use nuts. I just removed the transmission support and these things are spacers for the support itself. So this dropped it down probably an inch and a half there. There's actually, there's actually two holes up in the frame here. It was utilizing the front two and the last one wasn't bolted on. So I'm thinking after I get this thing restored and making it look pretty and then, you know, check if any welds are, are sketchy or whatever, then I'll go ahead and I'll just put this directly onto the frame instead of utilizing those spacers. I have the power steering box off. That's on the ground here. Now what I'll probably end up doing is take off this top portion here, this head, and I'll probably get the head powder coated because you'll be able to see that from the outside here. So that'll be... Uh, uh, illusion red that's the color I'm going with or uh, illusion cherry illusion cherry that's the accent colors that are gonna be on the Jeep the uh, the rims will be that the the frame will be that the support will be that anything that I'm taking to get powder coated is going to be illusion red and then we'll have the red of the Jeep I'm not sure what color that's called if somebody wants to look it up real quick on Google and put it in the comment section below people will appreciate it but it's basically this but then you know brand new and something I forgot to mention, when I was hammering the front end components out, uh, this, this nut actually came right off. So it was kind of convenient. It was sitting up through there. I just put it like that so I would remember to tell you guys. That's actually going to be a sucker to weld. So I'm probably going, going to have to cut out like a square out of this piece of frame and then weld a nut to it and then weld it back up because I don't think I'll be able to get up in here with my welder. I don't think that's a possibility. Different size lug nuts. Well, I guess that lug nut's not even tight, so I can just remove that one by hand. The Jeep already wanted to be like the Duramax, so I already wants to lose wheels. See, me, I'm going to make it a little easier on thieves, on wheel thieves. I'm gonna have all my lug nuts the same. The Jeep right now, if you wanted to take the wheels off of it, it would take you 20 minutes and probably about six sockets, just to let you know.
this is what the front end looks like now. Now I have had a lot of comments in the comment section. You guys have been saying you got a Dana 35 in the back, you got a Dana 30 in the front, and that's because I had the, the six cylinder. No Dalton, that's because you had the four cylinder. We had the powertrain and the power of a four cylinder, so we didn't need the Dana 44 in the back or in the front. So now we're kind of, now we're putting more power into it. We're, we're giving it 40, we're giving it 40% more power with this guy over here, the turbocharger. But when we run our big wheels, our, our differentials are definitely not gonna, going to like us. So people are saying to get a Dana 44, I would like to do that. If we can find one at the scrapyard, that would be really, really beneficial. If we can't and want to buy something brand new or maybe somebody wants to sponsor that. It's kind of starting to be like buying a house. You don't win when you, when you sell it, you win when you buy it. So for example, if, if you get a house for, let's say $10, and you know you can get $100 for the house, well you just made $90. You're calculating your profit before the thing actually happens. Now here, I did the, the opposite. This thing's going to be kick ass when it's all done. However, that's the wrong way to look at it. I should have kind of taken more time, found a better Jeep, to do this whole mod too, and this whole rebuild too, but I didn't. I, I just kind of rushed into it. I only, I only spent like three or four days researching, found this one, went down and grabbed it, and that's how we got the Jeep. However, I won't be too mad at myself if we can find a Dana 44 rear end and front end in the scrapyard. I would be much, much more happy about that then it would just be a huge, huge relief. And then we'd be back on track for only a, a few hundred dollars. And then we're gonna powder coat them to make them look sexy. So it's only going to add up in cost. I'm going to have probably the most expensive 98 or, no, why do I, I, I call it a 98 because we have a 97 chassis and a 99 engine. So I meet in the middle there. But I'm going to have the most expensive 97 Jeep Wrangler probably out there. But that's okay, it'll also be the coolest 97 Wrangler out there. That's what a Dana 35 rear end looks like. That's what a Dana 44 rear end looks like. So that definitely isn't the right shape, which I wish it was. Camera's not focusing. Nope. There it goes. Just leaving the scrapyard, don't have that good of news because they didn't have exactly what I wanted. I wanted a Dana 44 front end and rear end. Um, they didn't have that. They have a lot of vehicles, they have a lot of differentials. However, there's nothing that I can clearly see that would just, you know, hook right up or, or be relatively easy to readjust. So I'm going to do some research. You guys, if you guys have any information, please leave it in the comment section below. If you know something, like don't be afraid to type some stuff out. Otherwise, I'm just gonna run stock axles and when I break an axle, I'll just replace the axle. That's all there is to it. Ian's shop is right next to the junkyard and uh, since we didn't find a differential, we may as well uh, have a little bit of fun. I bought a, uh, an RC vehicle. This is my first like RC as a, uh, well, this is my first RC since I was probably about 12. And I guess this is a fast one. We'll tear into it and check it out. They had a red, white, blue, pink, and I think black. I went with the blue one. I got the battery in it and it's on. This says this is on. Yeah. So that goes right, that goes left, and now it's in park, and then this should be speed. Yeah, it works. Oh, yeah, it's fast. And they just do a burnout? <laughs> they just did a total burn. I think I'm gonna need a certification to drive this thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good. <laughs> you can't put it in the road. I'm putting it in the road. You're not put it not in front of my building. Come on. All you gotta do is hit it for crying out loud. You can't even hit it. I know. <laughs> hey, 
No. If someone hits that, we're gonna be. If somebody hits that, I'm gonna throw a rock at him. Well, hurry up and get it done. Doing. <laughs> it's got too much dark. <laughs> no. One more and then get it out of the road. Oh, so now you like the placement of my drum, huh? No, I still don't like it. What is your problem? You can't even drive it. Check out the suspension. She's ready to go. <laughs> Let's see your That's skills here. You're talking a lot of smack over there. You don't even know how to take it out of park. Easy, easy. I bet you it takes you two seconds you flip that sucker. Or you break it so much we can't even drive it anymore. Easy, see? It's, it's a little torquey, isn't it? Look at that thing. Look at that. Ian, you got some skills. You haven't flipped it yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then... Uh, how, do you, how do you do reverse? Well, it's it's upside but, down. Reverse isn't going to help you any right now. Well, I understand. <laughs> There's no flip over button. You have to manually walk over. Easy! How do you do reverse? Yeah, that way. Oh, that. Okay. Easy. My hand's there. Easy. Easy. You're going to burn up the tranny. <laughs> you go get it. Have fun. You drove way too far. Well, Ian's going to get the RC car. I am going to give one of those away, whether it's a red, a blue, a black, a white one. They even make it in pink. I'm going to give one random RC vehicle, just like you see here. It is spunky. It is fun. We're going to run a one-week-long contest like we did with the GoPro. But this time, every $5 you spend at MachineMerch.com earns you an entry. Get a decal, a hat, some Froggy Fresh merch, anything. You're automatically entered for something like that. Uh, Ian's going to keep breaking this thing. All the info will be in the description and at machinemerch.com. Good luck. We're, it's only going to be one week long. Our last winner for the GoPro was Damien H. Who's going to win this spunky thing? Easy! Yeah.